Hey, welcome back folks, it's Crazy Walder, and today I'm going to be showing you how to record and get your PSVR up to a higher resolution so that you can actually get some uh, some better results in your games if you're using it on PC. And this one's going to be pretty specific to AMD hardware, so let's go ahead and get started. So one of the first things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to launch your AMD Radeon settings. In this case, we're going to go ahead and go into the display options. And what you'll see here is you want to look for something called SIE HMD 08. And the first thing that you're going to want to try and do is you're going to want to try and go ahead and select virtual super resolution. Now in this case, um, because of the way that I have it connected right now, it is not on. But what you will actually end up seeing is you will have to see a button like this. You will simply click this to turn it on. And this is the first step to getting it going. Also very important that you get your GPU scaling to be enabled. And the next step, which is also very, very important, is you want to go ahead and go back home and go to Preferences, and you want to go ahead and go to Additional Radeon Settings. And this step is important because we're going to be changing the uh, the pixel representation on the screen. That way, it can actually be properly displayed. And the reason for this is because the panel for the um, Sony device is actually a full RGB panel, so usually the stock for AMD is going to be YCBCR, uh, which is blue and red, and uh, this is a pretty, pretty typical kind of pixel format for a lot of uh, for a lot of screens out there. But because the Sony panel is an RGB panel with RGB layouts, you're going to want to select RGB full, and when you do that, you're going to go ahead and hit apply, and this will actually allow your PSVR to show up. Now, how do you actually get your PSVR to show up? Well, there's another app called Trinus PSVR. Now, on this particular app, um, as you can see, I'm currently already running it, but you've got a couple of different options. Um, basically, you go to the Trinus website, you download this thing, and what you can choose to do is you can choose it to run in different modes, for example, Steam VR or mouse mode. And the main difference really is that in Steam VR, you're going to be using it just like any other sort of VR headset. And it actually tells you exactly how to install the Steam VR driver for Trinus. It tells you exactly how to connect, which is a pretty standard connection. Um, the only thing that's being replaced here is the PS4 is replaced by a PC. Otherwise, all the connections remain the same. Now, if you want to go ahead and use head tracking, you want to actually select mouse emulation mode because what this will allow you to do is when you move your head around, it will allow you to move your character around as if you were moving a mouse. Now, this mode I found to be working pretty successfully with some games and not so well with others. It really ultimately depends um, what, from what I found on different mouse smoothing options within the game itself. Um, as well as things such as mouse sensitivity. You want to really adjust that um, to be the right amount and also it depends on how powerful your hardware ultimately is because ultimately if you cannot turn your head very quickly due to the lagging frame rates then as a result what you will end up having is a lot of nausea. So make sure that when you are using it this way that ultimately you are actually able to turn without you know the game lagging significantly. Now another important factor here is that this device and software come with two different kind of modes which is that you can have a cinematic mode where it looks like you're basically in a theater and this is mainly meant for 3D movie watching. Um, this will work pretty good in most instances and it looks really nice but if you actually want to play the games in VR you're going to want to select VR mode and that will allow you to basically play the game with a distorted screen um, as is pretty normal for most VR apps. Now you can actually modify the warping in this section called advanced so that it fits your exact game and you can also test the 90 Hertz refresh rate. What I found is that for whatever reason on the PC we don't seem to be able to change too much of the um, the resolution on this as well as there isn't too much of a way to change the refresh. Now what I personally like to use is something called custom resolution utility this is something that's mainly relevant for us on AMD um, and a ATI Radeon cards because we simply don't have the option to do this um, within our settings in a way that it works. Now, what's important to note here is that you want to select, again, the SIE HMD. As you can see, I've already put in a 2560 by 1440 resolution at 120 hertz. 
Now it's uh, it's interesting to note because the device does not actually support 120 hertz natively. It does um, some basically software tricks that are kind of like low persistence to enable a higher refresh to be pushed as it's a single screen as opposed to a dual screen. So that makes things a little bit more complicated on Sony's end. And so far I have not been able to find a PC utility that is capable of doing so. I'm looking into some reshade options right now which allow you to use a depth buffer from the game um, to be able to utilize the um, the refresh rates a little bit better and also to be able to get better control of the depth in the game as well. Um, I'll end up having a video on this if I end up getting it to work properly but for now it is what it is and you're able to add in custom resolutions this way and a good way to check if your custom resolutions are working is ultimately to open your display settings and take a look and see where ultimately things are. So in my case, my display is going to be number two. So I'm going to go to advanced display properties and uh, you'll be able to see this resolution in here. But it is very important to note that you can also actually go in and adjust a couple of separate settings. And I'm going to go in and try and show you guys how to do that here, assuming that my PSVR stuff is actually able to uh, get working properly here. We'll end up seeing if it does indeed start showing up. Um, sometimes this is something a little bit more difficult and sometimes it's not. It ultimately just depends on how well um, your your computer is detecting this. In my case um, it seems like it still doesn't want to go into virtual super resolution but the idea is that once you have virtual super resolution enabled in here all you basically have to do is go to your display settings you'll end up going to your display, you'll go to advanced display settings, and you'll end up going higher than 1920 by 1080. Um, in my case, I prefer 2560 by 1440. What this will allow you to do is to super sample the game so that when you're looking further away, you'll actually be able to see the environments um, as opposed to having them be very blurry and pixelated. Um, now, on, on the monitor, when you're using 1080p resolutions, it's not really a problem because you're not up close to your screen. Whereas on the PSVR, you're zoomed in because of the lenses, and as a result, distant objects tend to be a little bit more sketchy. Now, I found that quite a few games, especially Unreal games, seem to handle this resolution on my hardware pretty well. Um, I have tried going up as far as 4K, but 4K seems to cause a lot of lag, um, as there's currently no hardware, really, that is capable of pushing these games, um, even at that sort of resolution, properly. It's a real shame, of course, that this is the case, but for now we're really hardware limited. Once I get my second card, I should be able to try and push the resolution on this hardware a little bit more, and we'll see how things turn out from there on. Now, for the time being, this is basically the way that you do your super resolution. Um, so you can either go with the ATI or AMD software, or you can use custom resolution utility to be able to push the hardware um, a little bit more than it was normally designed for and again to be able to enable super sampling. For those of you that are not aware that PS4 actually has super sampling um, when you are using the PS4 Pro and this allows you to basically have much higher fidelity when using the PSVR than you would with the regular PS4. This is a really great system and a really great setup for that because it actually allows you to have much more fidelity than would normally be um, able to see on a 1080p screen without actually having to have the extra pixels. And I found that so far the, uh, the amount of screen door is very unnoticeable on the PSVR certainly significantly less so than on something as the Oculus or the uh, HTC Vive. And uh, this is really, you know, this is really huge because being able to see everything in the world and not be distracted by um, basically black lines across the screen is a huge deal. And again, pushing the super resolution increases your ability to be able to see additional objects on the screen. So hopefully this helped you guys out. I'm going to try doing some more videos on helping you guys get this up and running. So far I've had a pretty positive experience running this with Trinus and custom resolution. I'm going to try and see if using anything such as Stridef or Warpex will give me better results in other games and I'll report back once I have more details.